What is going on guys? Welcome back to the sixth tutorial of the art tutorial series. In this video today, we're going to learn how to create plots. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn how to create plots in R today. And my goal for this video is to cover many different functions, many different basic functions and many different plot types. So we're not going to go into all the details and all the customization options. I want to present the functions to you. And then you can look into the details if you want to by using the question mark. For example, if I show you the plot function, you can just use a uh, question mark plot. And then you're going to get uh, in this case, we have two functions, but we're going to go for this one. Um, you can go into the documentation and look up all the different customization options for all the different functions that I show you today. But I want to cover many different functions. So uh, it makes sense to not go into all the details in a video. So let us get started with fundamental functions, meaning functions that are very basic, and then we're going to go to more advanced plot types. So the first function I want to talk about obviously is the plot function. So let's say I want to plot just a couple of points. So I know the x coordinates and the y coordinates. And I just want to display a bunch of different points. How can I do that? Uh, I can do that by saying plot and specifying two vectors uh, with the x coordinates and the y coordinates. So for example, I can say that my points have the following x coordinates 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and the following y coordinates, for example, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And then I can also specify some customization options. But if I don't want to specify anything else, I can just run this. And you can see I get a plot down here in the bottom right with the respective values. So 110 because I have one and 10 in the first position. Uh, it's not about the size, it's about the order. So for example, if I have 100 here, this would also still be associated with the one. So it's just the first element of the x values with the first element of the y values constitutes the first point and we plot the individual data points down here. That's the basic idea. Now we can add a ton of different um, customization options here. So for example, I can specify if I think that this is too far uh, to the to the margin here, there's there's too little margin here, uh, I can say that I want to change the y limit or the x limit of the axis. So for example, I can say the y limit should go from zero to 110 to have some more space around the points. And then I can do the same for the x limit if I want to. So I can say x limit should be from zero to seven, for example. Uh, of course, as a vector, otherwise, it's not going to work. And now you can see that there's some more padding in here or some more. Yeah, some more padding. Um, that's like the basic function, the basic scatter plot function. Now, let's say I have a plot like this, and I want to add some more points to it. Now, if I run a second plot function, so if I copy that, and let's say I have some more points that I want to plot seven, eight, for example, um, or actually, let's let's use some points that are already in the range. So let's use something like I have the point two and five for the x coordinates and maybe something like 60. And uh, I don't know, 10 for the y coordinates. Then if I plot this, I get a new plot. So I can plot this and I can plot this. But these are two separate plots. Now, if I want to add the points to the existing plot, I can use a function called points. So I can just call the points function to add these two points to the existing plot. So I have this plot and then I call the points function. Now, of course, for the points function, it doesn't make sense here to provide the limits. So just the points, but now you can see I added the two points. Now I can also specify the same parameters that I can specify here for customization. For example, let's say I want to have a special color for these two new points, I can say color uh, is equal to red, for example, so I plot these points, and then I plot these points. And now you can see they have a red color. I can also specify that I want to use a different uh, point character. I think this is what PCH stands for. I think point character. Um, and these are IDs. I think you can look them up in a documentation. But for example, 19 would be a filled circle. So if I plot this, and then this, you can see I have now a filled circle, not just a circle. Uh, and you can play around, for example, 12 would be um, something like this. And nine would be something like this. And then you can just experiment around if you don't want to look into the documentation. But you have different characters that you can use for displaying points. Now, let's say I don't want to add points to the existing plot, I want to add lines, how do I do that by using the lines uh, function. So what I do here is I specify the x coordinates, and the y coordinates again. So for example, I say I want to have a line from 
let's say 120 to 580, what I do is I specify, um, I specify one and five in the first vector and 20 and 80 in the second vector. And then I can specify things like the color. Let's say I want to have uh, a blue color here. And I also want to have a line type, for example, two to make it a dashed line. Uh, then you can see I plot the line in the existing plot by doing that. So again, these are the x coordinates. So the point from 120 to 580 is my line. So from 120, 580, uh, I use line type two, which is a dashed line and I use the color blue. Now, I can also add horizontal and vertical lines easily by using the ab line function. So or ab line function. So what I do here basically is I specify a value for either x or y and then I just specify the styling option. So for example, I can say I want to have a vertical line uh, at y equals 60, for example, and the color should be purple. And the line type should be the default one. Uh, or actually, oh, sorry, horizontal line at 60. So this one here, as you can see now it plots a horizontal line, I can also now plot a vertical line by using the V uh, parameter. And here I would use, for example, the value six. And then I get here, uh, the cross point at this point here. Um, so that's the easy way to do that. I can also add text, I can say, for example, I want to have a text at position 210. And the text should be labels equals Hello World, for example, then it puts a text here at the position that I specified, I can also specify a title for the plot. So I can say title, my plot, and then I get this title here. So you can see these are all very fundamental functions, they're not uh, functions that create a, uh, a full plot of something, but you just specify individual components. So it's a very manual process here. Uh, and what I want to show you also is I want to show you how to add a legend to this. So let's say this is my plot, and I have all these UI elements, I want to know what they're about. So for example, I can say here legend, then I can specify the location, I'm going to say top left. And uh, then I'm going to specify the different things about the legend. So for example, the legend itself will contain the following uh, values, it will contain original points, extra points, extra line, and then maybe straight lines or something like this. Um, then I'm going to also let me just move this a little bit so you can see the code better. So we have uh, these are the texts that are going to be displayed in the legend. The colors are going to be then the following. Now our original points are black. Our extra points are red, our extra line is blue and our straight lines are purple. Now for the character that is used to display the points, we're going to say it's one. So the default for the original points, it's uh, what did we choose now five for the extra points. Uh, it's nothing. So na for the extra line and nothing for the straight lines, because these are not points. So we don't have these values. And for the line type, we do the opposite, we say we don't have a line type for the points but we have the line type two for the line for the extra line and we have the line type one for the straight line. So let me just resize this a little bit before I run this. And now if I execute this, you can see I get this legend here describing what I have in my plot. So that's the basic idea of the legend. Alright, so these are now the very basic functions. Now we're going to go to the more advanced functions, or to the more um, yeah, high level functions, you could say so where we don't have to manually uh, create everything, every component of the plot. And these are, for example, still the plot function, but used differently. So let me just remove all of this here. Actually, this is my history, I want to have the environment. Okay, we don't have an environment. Um, what I want to do here now is I want to use a data set and I want to plot certain things about the data set. So let's say, for example, I load the cars data set. And if I look at the cars data set, you can see it basically has two features speed and distance. Uh, I can also use the question mark to see what these are speed and stopping distances of cars. Okay, so basically how long it takes to stop at a certain speed. And let's say I want to plot these data points now as um, as a plot as a scatter plot to see the relationship. Uh, what I can do is I can just say plot and then cars dollar speed cars dollar dist for distance. 
And by doing that, now I get the data points easily without having to do anything else. Now, again, I can do the same customization options. I can say the character is 19, for example, the color is blue, for example, uh, the title specified by the main keyword is cars, for example, um, actually call not color, there you go. Uh, so I can do all these customization options. Again, I would recommend you to look into the documentation for all the different things that you can do. But um, maybe one or two things that I can show you here, the x label can be set by using x lab. So I can say here, for example, this is the speed, y lab is going to be uh, the distance. And you can, of course, customize this however you want, just make it look beautiful. Uh, but that's how you can plot simple points. Now, let's say you want to do something else. Let's say I go for another data set here. Uh, faithful, for example, uh, if I look at this one, it's um, data of a, I hope I pronounce this correctly, a geezer. Is this how it's pronounced? Uh, this thing here. Uh, and it's basically just the eruptions and the waiting time. And let's say I want to know what the distribution of the waiting time is, I want to see what it looks like, what I can do is I can use a histogram. Now, how do I plot a histogram very easily by just using the hist function. So I use hist, and I pass to the hist function, just the faithful waiting feature. And then I get a histogram immediately. Again, same idea, I can use main to specify a different title, I can use x lab and y lab to change the labels here. Um, but some things that I can do here specifically for the histogram are, for example, I can change the border. So the border, um, or is it border color? No, it's border. Um, I can make this red, for example, if I want to it doesn't look very good, but I can do that. Uh, and I can also change the number of stops that I have. So the number of breaks that I have here. So these here are breaks, and they determine also how many bins I have. So for example, if I change this to breaks equals 20, I have a more granular histogram, as you can see. So uh, this is how you can do that easily. Another thing is maybe I have again, another data set, maybe I want to use the iris data. Um, if I look at the iris data set, I have these features, and then I have the species, the target feature, you could say, so I can look at that. And um, I can see, for example, what the what the uh, percentages are, how many instances are which class, and I can do that, at least in absolute numbers using the table command in R, it shows me I have 50 of each in this case. And if I want to visualize that what I can do is I can say species uh, counts. And then I can just plot a pie chart using the species counts like this. Uh, and I can also adjust here again, the colors, I can uh, adjust the uh, title and so on. So again, main would be something, whatever. That's uh, the pie function. Now, another thing that I can do is I can use the bar plot function to plot a bar chart. So for example, let's say I have the um, let's do something more interesting. Let's say I want to calculate something I have the iris data set and I want to calculate the mean sepal length uh, per species, I can say mean sepal lengths are equal to t apply. And then I can apply to the iris species length, uh, not uh, species length, sepal length, species, and then I can say mean, this will give me the mean lengths as you can see here. And now I can say, for example, bar plot mean sepal lengths. So yeah, and I can of course change the colors again, I can say here C equals to get different colors, red, green, blue, this is going to look horrible. But this is just an example. And of course, not C, but color and here to C. Uh, yeah, looks like an old TV, but that's what you can do here. Uh, then an interesting thing is you can also plot a box plot. So we can see, for example, if I want to know uh, what the distribution of a certain feature is per species, I can say box plot. And then I can say um, sepal, sepal length against the species. So use this wave here, and species, the data is going to be equal to iris and then I get a box plot for the individual uh, species here. As you can see, I'm not going to explain now what a box plot is. But yeah, basically showing you uh, things like the median and the max and the minimum and the um, 
the outliers and so on. Um, but I want to move on to the next thing. The next thing we can do, for example, is also if I have some topographical data, so the volcano data set, for example, uh, again, question mark volcano. If you look at it, topographic information, um, and we can easily display that by just calling image volcano. And this will give me a heat map. If I want to use a different coloring, I can say color is equal to terrain dot colors, for example, and I can pass 100, then I get a different one. But this can also be useful when you use um, when when you visualize some geographic information. It is also interesting to look at this volcano data using a contour plot. So uh, by doing this here, I can get the different heights. Um, this is also quite interesting. And maybe I want to look at this from a 3d perspective. So I can use the persp plot or the persp function to get a 3d view on this. Now, if I don't like the perspective that I'm looking at this from, I can change that by adjusting the theta and the phi values. The theta is the azimuth and the phi is the elevation if I pass 30 for both. So theta is equal to 30 and phi is also equal to 30. Then I get a different uh, perspective on this, which is uh, interesting. I can also say I want to have a shade of 0 0.5. It's just going to change a lot. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, so yeah, this is quite interesting as well. And then maybe the last thing that I want to cover here today is the strip chart, which is a one dimensional chart um, by default, but you can make it two dimensional by using, for example, the jitter method, or by displaying multiple, um, multiple strip charts. But what we do here, for example, is I say strip chart, and then sepal length, again, against the species, the data is going to be equal to iris. And if I just plot it like this, you can see I get these one dimensional charts here, you can see that some of them overlap, which means that there are multiple values here. Um, it's a little bit like a not really like a histogram, but you see how the values are distributed. And you can see that if there are multiple values here, it looks a little bit like a uh, it doesn't look like a histogram, but it's it could be a little bit like a histogram. Uh, what I can do here to make this two dimensional is I can say method equals jitter to basically make it two dimensional to see where there are multiple values. Uh, this is pretty uh, randomized. As you can see, when I run this multiple times, there's no logic here in how they are arranged on the on the vertical axis here. And I can also make this vertical in general. So I can say vertical equals true to make this a vertical plot. So to basically flip it. Um, yeah, so these are the visualization options. Again, you have more plot types, I recommend you look up the documentation for all the functions that I showed you here. For example, let's go for the first function, question mark perspective plots, what is this? What are the different parameters that I have here? Uh, what can I do with them? It's quite self explanatory, you also have some code examples down here. And this is the best way to learn about the functions and details. I wanted to give you an overview to show you how you can do things. And now you know how to create plots in R. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.